Guys, this is the Cedric Maxwell Podcast, and I am beside, let me see, number 74, 75. Top 75, Max. Don't play <laughs> me like that. Don't play me like that. This is, this is my guy, Paul Pierce, legend with the Celtics. And, man, Paul, congratulations, Thank first you, of all. Man. I Thank mean, you, I know it, it must be absolutely amazing when you think about I always thought you were good, but damn, be, <laughs> I mean, the top 75, that's a that's a mind blower, man. No, no, for real. You got to understand so many NBA players that's come through the league over the years. Think about <clears throat> over the 75-year period, you got thousands of players right. that play in the NBA, and to be mentioned among one of the top 75 ever is a great honor for sure. Did you actually ever envision that? Because, I mean, there's some – that's that's a I, I mean I, I look at it 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 boggles my mind because I think about the time the first time I met you you and I were out to, out at the practice facility out in Waltham and you were like shooting threes and you were looking at me like I can do this all day I was like <laughs> <laughs> and you were young at the time so it was just amazing then no you know what I think you know to be successful in this league and to be great you got to believe in yourself and that's what I try to tell you know ball players you know. Um, just the confidence is the one thing for me I think that stood out. Even when I when I failed, I didn't look at it as failure. You know, I looked at it as I learned something, you know. And so that's just who I was. You know, if I'm going to go out there and I'm, I'm going to talk trash and, and try to back it up, I put that pressure on me. But if I don't back it up, oh, well, I'm, oh, let me keep working. Let me keep working. And that's just who I was. And I'm, I'm, I'm one that was always able to take criticism. It didn't really phase me. I brushed it off. And, and, and to be great and to be one of the best, I think that's what you got to do. You got to be able to take it and roll with the punches and move on. One of the things I remember so well was your relationship with Doc. First and beginning, <clears throat> a little rough. Oh, there were yeah, some sure. rocky moments. I remember <laughs> yeah, Doc sure. Rivers had you on the bench one time, and he walked back down to you. He's like, damn it, Paul, you ready to go back in? You were like, I'm ready to go back in. You went to work. But your relationship with him and how it's developed over the years. Yeah, I mean, everybody know. I think it was kind of well documented that we didn't start off on really the right feet. But, uh, you know, some relationships uh, start off like that. When you know you're going to be together long term, it ain't always – you don't always see eye to eye. But uh, I think when I turn – the corner as a player uh, is when I just started to see what Doc Vision was for me. You know, he wanted to be, he wanted me to be just as successful as I wanted to be successful, and I didn't realize that at first. And so when I started to see that, uh, when we started to see eye to eye, it was just like that's when I became a better player. When I just started doing the things necessary to help this ball club win, doing the things necessary at practice, uh, being an example uh, for the younger guys. You know, when I when I started doing that and see that evolve and into what that what that created around the franchise, I became a better player. One of the things I, I truly remember about you was you love this Camp T A. Because you would <laughs> that that he, Tony Tony Allen says that all the time. He said, man, he said Forget about the rest of them dudes. He said every day, Paul Pierce <laughs> busted my ass every day in yeah. practice. Like, Paul, you'd be like, T.A., come on out here. And it made him better, but I can't imagine taking that kind of abuse every day. No, but you got to understand, T.A., Tony Allen has recognized one of our great NBA's great defenders. Uh, he made me better, too. And that's why I wanted to play against him every day. He came out of college. He was one of the top defensive guys. He was defensive player of the year, I believe, in the conference. And usually defense in college translates to the NBA. If anything translates, it's the defense. And I was like, all right, this young kid, he think he got some defense. I'm going to get – let, let me – come on over here. Let me see what that's all about. Come on over here. And so as I'm getting better offensively, he's getting better defensively. And, and I think that's what made us both – uh, great at what we did because I've been known as one of the great offensive players in NBA history and he's been known as one of the great defenders and so uh, you know we made each other better and I always took that challenge especially from a young guy as I got older he was young athlete and he made me better and that's why I called on him every day in practice. One of the things you look at this team is man just all of a sudden it was a perfect storm. Yeah. You get Kevin Garnett, you get Ray Allen, Paul Pierce is still in his prime it was just the perfect time for everything to come together. Yeah, absolutely. The only thing we all wish that we could have did it a couple of years earlier. Yeah, but it really was. I remember you. I remember you telling me that. You were talking yeah. about Kevin Garnett. And you said, Wick, you said, Wick, 
this is the guy we, we need, need to it. get. And that was way before you even got yeah, Kevin Garnett. Was a couple years. We was at the free throw line. I'm like, hey, Wick. We at the free throw line. So you, Wick, and I'm at the free throw line <laughs> boxing out. You on the front row right here. I'm talking about right here. I was like, look. Kevin at the free throw, I'm like, look, you we get him, we'll win the championship. I'm with him dead in his eye. And, you know, and then a couple of years later, we get KG and we deliver. And I'm like, man, I, I knew something. That, that, that magical run that you had had to be, like, just so wonderful to, you know, to be with the same team. Yeah. And, and, and to go through the grind, not go to another team and still to be here and to do it in a Boston Celtic uniform. Yeah, I, absolutely. I mean, do it with the team that drafted you. Because nowadays, Max, you look at how the player movement is. And, you know, I, I don't think there's nothing wrong with it. You know, players aren't empowering themselves. But, you know, they manufacture their moves now. Like, we got KG. Yeah, we had a super team. But we had to, like, do it through trade. We had to, you know, have some picks to do it. It wasn't like I was calling, hey, let's play together. You know, we can have a super team, which – I, that they're doing today, and so that's why this was this one's more special because it, I waited to like my tenth year. I'm like, man, I'm ten years and no playoff success, a couple first rounds, second rounds, one Eastern Conference Finals, and it's pretty much at the point where I'm like, you know, how much longer I got to play at this level? You know, we either gonna make a move or you know send me somewhere where I give give me an opportunity because I feel like I have the skills as a player to help a team win a championship. And so in you know, our tenth year, we made the move with Kevin and, and Ray, and we all complimented each other's skills. Perfect. You know, Kevin was our inside guy. Ray was our shooter, and I was a guy that can pretty much do a little bit of everything, and that's what made it work so well. And we conversated every day. We put our egos down. We was like, look, we all been in the same boat. We all coming from being all-stars. KG, you've been an MVP. You got multiple all-stars, race, shooting champ, all-star, but we ain't never won nothing. You know, you've been the man over there, Seattle, Milwaukee, Ray. Kevin, you were Minnesota. You've been the man. I've been over here in Boston. We never won nothing. So when we all got together, we like, man, look. It's about winning a championship now. So, you no know, egos, just brush them to the side. We need to do what we got to do to win. How good did you think you were going to be? I mean, because everybody said, oh, they won't win their first year. They're going to win the next year. And then the first year you guys get together, it was just and, – and, and the guy I love, you know, that we traded away was we traded away Al to get yeah. KG. And I was like, hey, I'm not really sure. And I saw KG make the first pass – and do something defensively, I was like, damn. <laughs> hey, this hey, damn. Let me tell you something, though. This could have went a whole nother direction to, because check this out. If the Celtics, say the Celtics that year get the number one or two pick, we got the number five pick, which ended up being Jeff Green, I believe, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, which ended up making a trade for Ray. And so things could have went a whole lot different because, like you said, Al Jefferson was a young piece. You had – Kendrick Perkins was another young and up-and-coming piece. Rajon Rondo. Say, for instance, that we get a number one or two picks, they draft Kevin Durant. Then I'm probably traded because now you have Al Jefferson, who's a young phenom. You get a guy who's Kevin Durant. Perkins. That's not bad. Three at the time. When you're talking about rebuild, Yeah. that's what it would have looked like. you know. And then I've probably been in the office somewhere. Who knows? And, you know, the future still would have been bright. I mean, because we all know what Kevin yeah. Durant, uh, he, he's become. But it could have went a whole different uh, direction if that happened. So, luckily, we get the five pick and it ended up the way it did. I remember your, and I'm not going to say, I'm, I'm going to say it, your, your arrogance towards younger players. I remember, the first, <laughs> I remember the first time you played against Kevin Durant. And you were oh, like... Yes. Kevin Durant, who the hell is this? Oh, and you yeah. like, oh, yeah. like, I remember you playing, looking like, shit, it's Seattle. And, like, and, and I would always see you, I'm like, oh, we can see Kevin. He's like, Kevin Durant. I don't look. And, but wow. then it was like you you watched him and you said, damn, man, that kid is pretty good. But, but you know what it was, too? Because I saw that from other players when I was a kid. Yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, I'm looking at guys like, you know, when I came in the league, like, I'm playing against, like, Jordan. I remember playing pickup with Jordan. You're like, Paul Pierce. Like, <laughs> yeah. 
you know, me and Twan, you know, we playing against these guys. And I'm looking at Jamal Mashburn, looking at me like, <laughs> playing Big Dog Robinson. They, what was this? You know what I'm saying? So, like, I'm like, damn, they really? Okay. So, now as I got older, I'm giving it back to the girl. I'm coming to red, the ball. Okay. Who is y'all? Like, you know what I'm saying? So, I think that's just the way to be attacked. Because, look, they coming after you. They coming after your yeah. slot. Yeah. You know, you slot it in. Y'all play the same position. You know, you don't want to give him no edge as a youngster, so that's how I was. Wow. What a magical year this is for you, though, to go to the Hall of Fame, now to be one of the top 75 players in the history of the NBA. Does it get better than that? And yeah, and now I mean, we look at all the things you're doing, and, you know, you talked about Showtime yeah. and, and things that you're doing. You left ESPN, and you said, oh, everybody said, Paul Pierce making a mistake leaving ESPN. No, I got fired. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I got fired. Okay. And they fired me. All right. Well, I'll we'll talk about why on another, you know, okay. another day. But, but you, you got fired. But then, as one thing I've always learned about like Paul Pierce, things I was doing. You, you've always, <laughs> you've always made that lemonade. You always had that lemon, and you could always turn it into lemonade. Yeah. And you, man. you, and the thing you've talked about, you and I talked about, is you said what I do is I just I keep going. You said yeah. I'm, I'm giving one life. But I'm not going to stop. I'm going to keep going. Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, one door closes, another one opens, Max. You know, that's what life is about, ups and downs and how you bounce back. And that's who I've always been as a player and as a person. You know, the things didn't work out there. Okay, fine. Now it's time to get back on my feet. I got something else going. I got a Showtime deal I just did. Uh, working with you know Stack and Matt and KG, me and him got something in the you works. and KG, y'all y'all ain't number <laughs> y'all ain't number gangsters, man. No, I, I give a damn what you y'all y'all like the no, the we brothers. I know, but you we you brothers, guys are the man. original mafia kings, man. Every time I look at you dudes, you always got some shit going on. Me and KG, we got I said, hey, it's always, brother, and it's always man. something you're doing good. No, it's my brother, man. We we I think we stuck to, for life. We stuck for life, man. We live five minutes from each other. You know it's crazy? I moved, and then he moved. It's like, we lived by each other for the last 15 years in L.A. Wow, wow. And so, you know, our kids are the same age. We're forever connected. <laughs> and so, you know, that's just how it is. You know, you got peanut butter and jelly. You got, you know, <laughs> you, you, you got Mario <laughs> Brothers. You got Paul and KG. <laughs> that is, that's just simply when you think that all the things you guys have done together. And now I even like the fact that I got to bring Ray Allen, who was the third amigo that you were, you talked about him and your brotherhood with him and, and you're at your retirement and you, you kind of bring him back in the fold. Mm -hmm. And it looks like Kevin and, and Ray now are starting you to talk a little me, bit. It's like, gave, bring, like bringing the damn band idea, back. Max. You just gave me okay. an idea. Okay. Me and KG are going to do some a show with Showtime. I think Ray Allen should be our first guest. Yes. Whoa. <laughs> you know what? We don't need anything gave... from the peanut <laughs> gallery, okay? We got a peanut <laughs> gallery of eight men in it. But, uh, you know, I think over time things be uh, will mend together. And I think the, that you slowly and surely we had a chance to talk to Ray at the Hall of Fame. We were all there in the same building. And I really give a lot of credit to Doc, though. Because, you know, me and KG was sitting there – at the Hall of Fame, and we were talking about the situation. You know, me and Ray pretty much mended our <clears throat> our differences. And, you know, KG is still on the fence, but I think our conversation with Doc kind of smoothed things over to where you, you're you going to see us all back together no, pretty that's soon. That's cool. You, and know. you look at, uh, you, you just opened up something, you talked about Doc Rivers. Your, your vision of what's going on right here in Philadelphia, what's mm -hmm. going on with... Ben Simmons and, and Kyrie Irving, but Ben Simmons first. What, what the I, hell do you, you see you, you as a player? You know what? If Doc kick you out of practice, then you you that's bad because I ain't never seen. I think I've seen Doc kick somebody out of practice maybe once. Wow. Like, Doc ain't going to kick you out for nothing. You know what I'm saying? You really got to be an asshole for Doc <laughs> yeah. to kick you out of practice because Doc is one of the coolest coaches. You know, you can, you you can you know he, he understands the player. Yeah. And so, you know, I don't know if that relationship can be – Mend it back together. I, I feel like it's so, so far gone because when I hear the things that Embiid is saying is in an interview, like he can't babysit yeah. and not kicking you out of practice, it's draining to a franchise. It's draining to your teammates if you're trying to win. You know what I'm saying? They got championship goals over there when, with Ben Simmons. They was the number one team in the East at the end of the year, number one record-wise 
Uh, and so, I don't know what they can do now. The guy didn't come in shape for camp. He hasn't reported and late the practice, going through the motions. It's like if I'm in B, that's discouraging. If I'm if I'm all the players, you know, it's like yeah. what to do next. It's like derailing because a lot of these guys have – guys like MB have a, a legacies that's on the line, you know, where if you can add a championship to your resume, you know, he's already a great player. And these other guys, you know, people, guys are playing for – but the thing is when you lose one guy like that, other guys got to be ready to step up. So if I'm one of them other guys, hey, it's time to step up. Shoot, that could be more money for me. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know, so you got to try to think about the light at the end of the tunnel, but that's a difficult situation because Ben Simmons is an all-star player. Yeah. Regardless of his deficiencies and what he can't do, he's an all-star in this league, and he's proven that. Transitioning, you talk about teams wanting to win right now. You look at Brooklyn. Yeah. And, you, and speak a little about the Kyrie situation because that is – I don't like if I am if I am James Harden if I am Kevin Durant right now how how am I feeling about that particular thing? I'm a little discouraged because for one you know I think Kevin Durant came to Brooklyn because of Kyrie. Uh, Harden came to Brooklyn because of both of them. You know I know they've all developed a friendship over the years, and, and so but if I'm Katie and Harden I got to feel like hey we still got enough. Because if you looked at what they did with just throws two on the court, they balled last year. It was a small sample size, but look, they're good enough because both of them guys can win MVP. They're MVP caliber players without Kyrie. And so, but adding Kyrie, it just makes things like you're a little more confident. Yeah. Because you got a player that's like, look, if we have an off night, me and Kyrie can pick up the slack and vice versa. You know, and we, it's nothing like. Because Kyrie, I mean, you talk about offensive juggernauts. You think about, I hear people say, Kevin Durant, he's probably the best offensive player ever. Then you've heard certain years, James Harden, he's the best offensive player ever. He averaged 36. I mean, nobody could do it. And then you like, Kyrie, you like, he's the most skilled offensive player. It's like, dang. It's like you got three guys that they say this yeah. about. Yeah. I mean, geez. I mean, if you could get them on the court, I feel like that could be magic for a long stretch. We only got a small sample size, but even with KD and Harden, I feel like they still got enough. Wow. I'll move from that to where you're living now, in L.A. Mm-hmm. What's going on with the Lakers? Because that – how the, it, do you see that working? I mean, because Westbrook, tremendous skill. But are yeah. you able to translate that skill package into what they can do now? You're looking at it as a player. You know, I look at this team. They're older. They're the oldest team in the league. It kind of reminds me of the team we had in 2010. We were older, and it was tough for us to get through the regular season. We only won 50 games because it was just like some nights you was going to have it, some nights you're not as an older team. But we knew if we could just get to the playoffs healthy, we'll be all right. You got a shot. And that's what I see in this Lakers team. They just got to get to that because they got the – the four to five wise men over there. They got all the experience. They got GOAT LeBron James over there. I mean, they got all everything you need. If they could just get to the – when the game slows down in the playoffs, I think they'll be fine because I'm like, look, with that talent, with that skill with LeBron, when the game slows down, who's really that good out west? To me, the west is down. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, Phoenix made it to the finals last year, but – they, they, I feel like they got lucky because certain players were hurting certain teams. Denver lost Jamal Murray. Lakers didn't have Anthony Davis. You know, Utah, are, are they really that good? They're good. Don't take nothing away mm-hmm. from them, but are they that much better than anybody? Steph? They didn't even make the playoffs last year. Yeah. You know, so, so if you're telling me that you add a Klay Thompson who's coming off an Achilles and ACL can push them over the top, like, I mean, I, come on, man. Here's the thing. I, I mean, who else is who's out there? Well, well, man, well here's the thing. Yeah, I mean, the Lakers, it's there for the Lakers to take. Yeah, well, we, we, we talk about Golden State, and I love this. Uh, I was reading some article yeah, today. Steve Kerr said that Draymond Green should have been one of the top 75 players of all time. No, I mean, I don't agree with <laughs> No, I mean, no. I mean, of course he's going to vouch for his players. No, 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 come on, I mean, man. 
I mean, think about the guys that didn't make it. Yeah. You, you talk about Vince Carter. You talk about Tracy McGrady. You talk about Dwight Howard. Now, are we putting Draymond on the same level? Yeah, he's been defensive player of the year. He's played on some championship teams. But these guys that I'm talking about, I think – they should have been on there because these is talking. I'm talking. I mean, we, Yao Ming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, nobody I even saying nothing about wow, Yao Ming. I, I forgot about him myself. <laughs> like, yeah, look at them names yeah. that didn't make it. Now that's a prestigious group in itself. So I mean, nothing against Draymond, but Steve Kerr is just fighting for his guys. We know that. I, the thing that I keep hearing about over and over again, I want you to set us straight: is your relationship or lack of or whatever it is with LeBron James because everybody said Paul Pierce he's envious of LeBron James or Paul Pierce was on ESPN he had I got tired of talking about LeBron James straighten us out give us let, give let us a skinny what it's like let me tell you this I have nothing against LeBron James we have had our battles yes we've had some great battles and I appreciate being able to face a, a guy of that caliber who guy who people consider you know the greatest of all time or, or right there but what people only hear is the negative things I've said. And in my eyes, they're not negative. It's just, you know, some people are deserving more criticism than others. And when you're chasing the GOAT spot, you're going you're gonna to get more criticism. But people act like Jordan didn't get criticism. Yeah. You know, and so what people didn't hear is when he won his last championship, I, I put LeBron as the number two greatest player of all time. But people don't want to hear that. They only hear the stuff I say like, Oh, if they lose in the first round, I don't want to never hear them in no go conversations. Oh, all we do at ESPN is talk about LeBron. He's just a LeBron hater. Like, but they don't hear the praise I didn't gave this man over the years. So, you know, screw those people. People just want to talk about the negative aspects. But I've always given LeBron his due respect. I, I see that your your relationship again. How, how's your family doing? Because you know you you just told me you have a a new little one. Mm -hmm. You got you had you have your kids already, and now you have your papa your 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 papa again. <laughs> what eight month old? Yeah, you say? I got so I got three girls and a boy. Uh, Priyana, my oldest, we had the championship year. She's yeah. thirteen now. Wow. G Giselle, she's ten. My boy is Prince, and then I have an eight year eight month year old named Soleil. Uh, and so that's what I'm busy with lately when I'm not doing things for Showtime. And, you know, I just partnered up with DraftKings uh, on some things. They got a lot of money, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling They're you. They're going to love to hear that. You know, <laughs> along with that, and, and you say that, and we're here in the lovely Encore Hotel here in Boston, <laughs> another place that, you know, that we've heard your name tied up with. This mm. is it's like Paul Pierce is like inventing himself over and over again with all these opportunities. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's what life is all about. You know, I went from Paul Pierce, the basketball player, to now Paul Pierce, the entrepreneur. I'm going to be launching my cannabis brand here in Boston uh, next month in December. You know, so I have my hand in that industry along in the sports world. Uh, you know, uh, I'm hoping. And now, like with, with DraftKings, I'm doing something in the sports uh, book gaming industry and so uh you know i think that's what life is all about trying to find ways to reinvent yourself as well i'm still going to be always connected with the nba and talking hoops whenever we want to talk hoops i'm gonna come share some stories with you max maybe do some sideline stuff with mm -hmm. the celtics i've talked to mike gorman about possibly doing some games maybe do you know and then uh you know doing some stuff with kg did you ever think that number 34 would be the number you, I mean, I see it all the time in the arena. I mean, I'm, I'm <laughs> out, I see old people, I see young people. It's like that, that to me is so cool. That do, do you see that when you're, you know, you're flying someplace, or you go someplace, yeah, and man. you go like, damn, that's that might that, that has to be the cool feeling. Yeah, it is, you know, and I'm happy that I'm giving the new generation fans a player to connect to. You know what I'm saying? Because throughout Celtic Heries, throughout Celtic history, Every generation has had a player uh, that they connected to and teams they connected to, you know, like the Russell days, like you and Larry Bird mm -hmm. days. And, you know, now that we was able to win, I, I, I've extended that with this generation. I'm happy that I was able to do that. You know, we've seen Maxwell Bird jerseys. We've seen Russell Cousy jerseys. Now they can be proud to wear a Pierce jersey. You know, so now who's going to be that next yeah. guy? You know, who's going to be to keep this going throughout the generations? 
you know, yeah. and, and you know the Celtic history is one of a long and great history. So hopefully that guy can be Brown or Tatum. Yeah, I was going to the, the last question I wanted to talk to you about is about those two guys because it's 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 legendary. It was seen that time that Tatum shoots his jump shot and Paul Pierce gets so excited he runs <laughs> on the court and and high fives the dude. I'm like Paul, what are you doing? You know what? I think that's really what it's all about. Cause Max, cause I remember just. You know, as a young player coming there, seeing you on the sideline, uh, Tommy Hineson, Kuzi in the building, Russell. It, I think it's our job. It's important for us to come for this generation also. So hopefully that's what I want to do during the year. I want to come back, be a face in the stands, you know, something they can hold their hat to. KG going to bring him back, uh, Ray, you know, so we can sit in the stands because that's what Celtic family and Celtic pride is all about. You know, the, the players of the past coming back, supporting the, player, the players of the present. Man, well, you know, hey, I can't. I finish on a note like that, man. It was an <laughs> absolutely joy to have you. And again, we're Definitely. here at this lovely Encore Hotel. We hope you guys enjoyed it. Cedric Mac- Maxwell podcast, my boy Paul. I am so happy that you decided because <laughs> you've been stiffing me for a long fucking time. But now <laughs> I got you little 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 now to come with me. I'm like Westbrook. I, I, I got you now. I'm like Westbrook in real life. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoy it and and subscribe. That's all we'll say. Peace out.